Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storms on Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, to start out with today, we got an interesting blog post by researchers at the Ruhr University of Bochum, and they're looking into how to decrypt or actually gain access to the decrypted content of encrypted PDF files. Kind of notable is that they actually don't really decrypt the PDF. So what they found was not an attack against the encryption algorithm really being used as much as an attack against how PDFs are composed. First attack is pretty straightforward. The problem with encrypted PDFs that is being exploited here is that PDFs actually may contain mixed encrypted and decrypted parts. So what they're doing in this attack is they're adding some JavaScript that's not encrypted to the PDF. Once the recipient decrypts the PDF, the JavaScript is then used to exfiltrate the content. This is very similar to some of the attacks that we have seen against encrypted emails, for example. Now, the second attack they came up with is actually attacking a weakness in the encryption, but again, the victim is actually decrypting the document for the attacker. And the problem they're exploiting here is that PDF encryption uses the cipher block chaining encryption mode without any integrity checks. Uh, if you're encrypting without actually checking the integrity of the message, then there's always a possibility that an attacker will be able to modify the message and add additional content. Now, to make this work, you do need uh, some known plain text in the PDF. Uh, now, given the PDF structure and in more recent AES uh, version 3 documents, there's a permission structure at the beginning that can be used. It's not that terribly hard to come up uh, with this known plain text. And then again, it can be used to add additional content to the PDF. And uh, that could, for example, be just a simple URL and the confidential content is then just appended to the URL and again exfiltrated once the user is decrypting the document. The real fix here is, of course, a change in the PDF specification to not allow, for example, for the use of AES CPC without uh, any integrity protection, also to not allow at least restrict, make obvious these partially encrypted documents. Remember that the victim may have received a document that was initially all encrypted, but then the attacker added the unencrypted malicious part. Now, not all PDF readers support this mixed encryption and decryption feature, but all current PDF readers that do support encrypted PDFs do only support AES CBC without integrity protection, because that's essentially what the latest PDF specification is asking for. So instead of relying on PDF's own encryption, it's probably best to use some other means to encrypt the document before sending it to another party. And it looks like Microsoft is realizing that the upcoming Windows 7 support deadline in January is hitting a lot of businesses a little bit by surprise. Shouldn't really was announced a long time ago. But just like with Windows XP, a lot of businesses have a hard time letting go of Windows 7. So Microsoft a while ago announced, for example, that any systems related with the 2020 elections uh, will still receive security updates, but it now also announced that they do have an extended security update program for small and medium sized businesses. In the past, uh, you only were able to subscribe to these extended updates if you're an enterprise customer and you used uh, some kind of volume licensing. Now Microsoft is making this available for 
smaller companies as well. However, the blog post that describes it doesn't mention what the exact pricing will be for this service. And this will keep you going for another three years. Then I mentioned a couple times in the past, we had a number of diaries about odd document types that are used to distribute malware. And because they're not your standard document type, they often evade detection. Cisco's Talos research team now has an interesting blog post where they are looking at the open document format that's used by tools like OpenOffice, StarOffice, but of course it can also be opened in Microsoft Office and the like. Well, uh, these documents are now used to spread malware. And again, because they're not sort of your standard office document, they may also bypass some of your protection features probably worthwhile just to pick the good old ACAR signature in an ODD document and see if your solutions block them. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.